here today to talk a little bit about uh, an online class that I um, taught a year and a half ago, or about a year ago, a year and a half ago, um, that was the first online class for our department, which is all studio art. So this was kind of like a little bit of a departure, thinking if we could somehow bring the studio uh, experience onto an online learning situation. So I don't know how well it went, but I'll tell you a little bit about what we did. Um, first of all, I um, made use of both on course, a little bit about the course. The course was called Drawing the Digital Age, and it's a course that is like an introductory level drawing class for non-majors and majors alike. We had a mix of students in there. For majors, it's a required, a second drawing course is required, but it doesn't have to be this one, and have people who are just interested in taking a drawing class who showed up as well. Um, if I taught this online as a six-week summer session course, partly because I figured if it's a total flop, I'll only have to be doing it for six weeks, and so it's <laughs> <laughs> stressful. And it, um, I also felt like since for many students this 200 drawing, level drawing class was a requirement, um, they could maybe take it over the summer while they were still holding down a full-time job or if they you know, couldn't be on campus or something. So it seemed like maybe a, a good candidate for such a situation. So initially, I'm just showing you here uh, a little screenshot of how I used OnCourse just to kind of set things up for the class. Um, every, uh, what I had to learn as a studio instructor who was not used to, we have, three, we have six hours of class meeting time a week. We kind of come in, we talk, things are um, very kind of informal in a studio class for the most part. I mean, it, we, we have strict policies about showing up and everything like that, but we kind of disperse information throughout the three hour period. And for an online class, it was an entirely different world. We really had to, I had to be way more organized than I was used to. So I kind of used OnCourse to kind of let students know what it meant, um, what requirements there was going to be of them in terms of technology, in terms of their participation. Um, I also used OnCourse, not if you can read any of this, um, to, uh, to disperse all the assignment sheets that I gave them. And then we, I used Box, used this slide and this slide, I used Box for them to upload all their assignments and for them to be able to offer comments to each other about the works that they were making. So for me, one of the biggest challenges of teaching this class was how to account for the collaborative learning that's essential for a studio class. You know, the learning from each other and also, um, and I found Box was really essential in this because they could upload assignments and students could see what each other uploaded um, and they also yeah. could comment on each other's uploading. So just stepping back one, one thing about the organization, um, I found that I needed to be much more specific in the way that I assigned a project, um, writing out a very clear assignment sheet. And I found that for me, teaching an online class required a lot of thought in that I had to be specific here without trying to make something that would give like a very convergent outcome. So you still are I'm still trying to leave room for independent learning while being really specific. So this first project was just you know kind of learning how to use the most basic tools and Illustrator, and just I was pleased that I was able to get projects that fulfilled the assignment that looked so entirely different from one another. And like again, another very basic project, learning the most basic tools in Illustrator, same uh, assignment sheet, same you know objectives, same tools that could be used, so on and so forth and really pretty dramatically different outcomes mm -hmm. in terms of what the students were able to generate. So these were the first two projects done within the first week of class. And um, the students would upload them. They would um, write comments about their own work in kind of a reflective way. So I'd ask them to title their work, write about why they made the decisions that they made. And this made it a little bit easier for me to then offer them critique or offer uh, their peers to offer them feedback mm -hmm. as well. So we're kind of hearing what they were thinking, and then we could apply it further on. Another collaborative opportunity um, came with the second group of drawings that we did as part of this class, which were all based on organic objects. So I had the students scan all sorts of organic objects. These are organic objects. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess they all, the requirement was that they had to fit under a scanner. Um, <laughs> and we put them into a class archive um, online in Box, and anyone could use any of the data that was scanned. So the data was seen as just that, information, and what the students would do with that information was gonna be their invention, how they translated these photographic scans 
into something that was linear, because we're still working with line at this point. So you start to see people borrowing each other's um, you know, images. They were asked to combine information from multiple scans to, into one um, image. And it, it forced them to look at each other, what each other found, and kind of reconsider that. And people also got the opportunity to see something that maybe they had approached, redone in somebody else's you know, digital hand. Um, just another example. So go to screencast. That's where I go to screencast. Um, one of the things, the other big challenge for me, okay, back, first of all, my background is not in digital technology whatsoever. Um, I had only started teaching this class a year or two semesters prior to actually doing this online version. And um, I learned all Illustrator and Photoshop in order to be able to do this. My background is in painting and, and drawing, so um, it was a little bit of a stretch. Um, and how to do the demos was one of the things that I found especially difficult. Like, how do I do a demo for an online class? And this, I found something called Jing, J-I-N-G, and you can download this free software that will just, you know, basically record whatever you do on your screen for five minutes. So almost, you know, every class I had a Jing podcast that I would make or a screencast that I would make. And here's just an example. Okay. So, well, this, just to show you, I mean, like, you know, Think the things that we were doing and sometimes were more complex than I could ever um, describe in, not that they were that complex, but ha that I could ever describe in an assignment sheet. Um, the students were directed to things like lynda.com to look at specific tutorials, but it seemed like it was more effective to just be able to show them specifically how to approach something with the tools that we needed. Um, we also, um, I would, that screencast that we didn't see the whole thing of was just getting them ready to do a project like this where they were using the perspective grid in Illustrator and using um, uh, Photoshop to start to work values into the, the whole source. Um, another thing that was really helpful was Adobe Connect. And Kate Ellis mm -hmm. works for the Priscilla, um, and who also was really was supportive throughout this whole process and initially supportive was initially supportive in giving me a grant to prepare for this um, class, uh, helped me with Adobe Connect, which I felt was made a big difference, because we met weekly and kind of did critiques um, on Friday mornings and kind of were able to talk about those types of things. Uh, one last thing, we also did some animations that was another opportunity for kind of collaborative learning. Um, here's one, just a very, their first animation where everyone was just asked to you know, draw their hand, and then we could collect them together. They could kind of see what other people did. Mm -hmm. um, their only job was just to <laughs> just <laughs> make a hand. But it led to a project mm -hmm. that we did next, which was called Exquisite Corpse. And for the Exquisite Corpse project, every student, if you know what a surrealist exquisite corpse, we actually called this exquisitely animated corpse. Every student was asked to um, make an animation, give their last frame to some other student for their first frame, and we were able to string it together. So I just have a couple of those in here. But that was a way for them to kind of, oops, I guess I didn't want to play that. Um, we did all of this in Photoshop. Well, some of the, I mean, some of their files came in from Illustrator, but we just used Timeline in Photoshop, and it's super simple. Um, for some reason, I'm not pressing the go button. I'm not pressing the go button, okay. There we go, right there. Okay. So one person's animation would lead to another person's. So they would have gotten that and then started to build something out of that. I just put one little sequence in there um, for you to kind of get a taste of that. Um, am I out of time? Probably. Okay, great. Okay, so if there's any questions or anything, um, I'll be glad to answer those.